we're talking sports and entertainment today. Those two kind of go together. And in light of the fact that we're in NBA final season and everybody is pulling for a particular team, you always wonder how these people got there. First, we're going to introduce, and it's my pleasure to introduce a legend in Detroit basketball, Mr. Antoine Jobert. Good morning. Good morning. How you doing? Oh, I'm fine as wine in a glass. <laughs> All right. And we have one of his mentees and one of his players, Mr. Chase Glover Rogers. Good morning. How are you? Fine. I love your voice. I love your voice. <laughs> Great voice. You know, when you start doing those television interviews, you know, you'll, re you'll think back to this <laughs> and stuff. So, um, Antoine, you went to Southwestern. Yes, I did. Uh, born and raised in Detroit and uh, graduated from Detroit Southwestern. Those were some fun years, weren't they? Yes. Because you all won the state three t times in a row, right? Yes, we won the state uh, twice in the city three times in a row. Yes. Wow. Yes. Was that was so. amazing. Who were some of your other teammates? Uh, I played with uh, Leslie Rocky Moore, uh, Clarence Jones, uh, Chauncey Scott, and Perry Watson was our coach. Perry Watson, the legendary. Mm -hmm. I hear he's down in Florida or something now. Yes, he's uh, retired. Well, he just came out of retirement. He's uh, working with the Orlando Magic, and he's playing a lot of golf. So he taught me how to play. Perry's dream job. I mean, Perry is actually doing his dream. Yes, he is. And Chase, how old are you? 13. You're just 13, and you're how how tall already? 6'1". Six 6'1". One. Six one. What size are your feet? 12. I wear a size 12. I, you know, I used to tease my son. I said, act your age, not your shoe size. And he said, <laughs> uh, well, my, my shoe size is my age. Because when he was seven, he was wearing a men's seven. And, right, you know, right. all, of, all of that. He said, so you can't tell me. I'm acting my, <laughs> my age and my shoe size. So what school do you attend? Orchard Lake Middle School in West Bloomfield, Michigan. Oh, wow. You play. What's your position? Shooting guard. Shooting or I can guard. play anything, really. Well, Antoine, after college, you went to University of Michigan, and then you played basketball for a while, and you've decided to devote a lot of time to young people, correct? Yes, I do. I, I, I devote most of my time to the youth and uh, just want to try to give back what was given to me. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think the big lessons of basketball are more than just the fundamentals? Uh, I think the best, big lessons are, uh, you know, it, it's, it shows you how to be in the team concept and work together with people. What, what does that team concept take you? Where does that take you? That team concept takes you everywhere. It takes you through sports. It takes you through the job world. Uh, you know, when I first retired, I came home and I had never had a job. And I started, <laughs> I started working at Chrysler, actually, and... Uh, Everything you do is about team concept. And Perry taught me that at a very young age. So I fit right into the system with the other supervisors and stuff. So it showed me a lot. I worked there for four years. And after that, I decided to do something with the youth and, and give back to the kids. That's excellent. So what did you do first? Well, uh, first I started out with uh, young men basketball, and they were third and fourth graders, and now <laughs> now they're growing up to be seniors. So. so you had the same kids, a lot of the same kids? I had a lot of the same kids for uh, since they were actually fourth graders, and now most of them are seniors. Uh, my first graduation class was the year before, and I had six kids that graduated and went on to school, but all didn't play basketball. Some were academic scholarships. We, uh, we're partnered up with a group called Solid Foundation that tutors our kids as well. And we had one kid that actually graduated with a 32 on his ACT. Really? And he's down at the University of Alabama. So we have some kids that went to Michigan. Is that the Crimson Tide? Crimson Tide, yes. And he's not there for basketball. He's there for academics. Excellent. So we do a lot of mentoring in that way and just try to teach them that the ball can carry you a long way in life. It can. It can carry you a long way in life and not just the basketball court. Because I remember, like even with my son, now he is a 
he's a account executive for Houghton Mifflin, the textbook company. Right. You know your textbooks, Houghton Mifflin. Mm -hmm. He's one of the top 50 sales in the entire country oh, that's because fabulous. he learned to talk to people and he learned the teamwork concept. Concept, yes. And that's so important, Chase. I know we keep on saying it to you and so <laughs> forth, but that is so important. Now, when did, Chase, when did you start playing basketball? Five, when I was like five. When I used to suck, I used to just start throwing <laughs> the ball up. <laughs> when you used to suck. <laughs> so tell me, why did you say you used to suck at that? At five years old. Five years old, the first time I picked up a ball, I didn't know what to do with it besides throw it up. And we and my dad were outside for an hour, and I, it took me at one hour to make five shots on a rim that was seven <laughs> feet tall because that's when I was little. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, what did you do after that each year? Did you start doing something every, each year in basketball? Every year I started to work on something different so I can get better with my right hand uh, shooting form. I used to shoot with two hands. Now I actually know how to shoot. That was like a while ago. But I still didn't know how to shoot with one hand. Now I'm working. Now I'm, right now I really want to work on my dribbles and my left hand because that can make me really better so I can have I can be a threat going to each side of the basket. Yes, that's very important. I always mm -hmm. tell young young men that learn to dribble with both hands, push that ball, push that ball. And your strongest suit, you told me, was shooting. Or driving to the rack because I'm bigger than most people, so they can't really stop me from doing that. Listen to that. Yeah. Listen to you. Chase, is, we just got finished playing uh, Division One and Division Two uh, state qualifiers, and we finished second. And second, we didn't win the championship this year, but Chase was probably the best player, got MVP. And he's going to be a very good player if he keeps working hard. Yes, keep working hard and, and continue to balance your schoolwork because you know this, and I know this, when you get to college, your time is just... It's consumed. Yeah. Consumed. Yeah. So how did you balance um, textbooks and... Yeah, I, I had some kind of idea how it would be, uh, you know, through Perry being in college and stuff and telling me how to manage my time. Plus, uh, I had Leslie Rockymore in front of me who had already was at Michigan. So when I got there, they like, look, you got you to gotta manage your time. You got to do this, this, and that. So I had some kind of idea how it would be. So it wasn't as hard for me uh, managing my time and stuff, right. study table and all Well, it's stuff. almost like a job in yes, a way. Yes, it Don't is a think? job. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you have to put in the time, and it's it's basically an eight-hour job. You may practice at 6 in the morning, you got school at 8, then you may practice again at 2, and then you got to study, and you got training tables. So it, it's basically a job. I know. it's basic. And then when you travel, that's a whole other thing, isn't it? Yes. When you travel, you may miss class, so you got to come back and try to get with your professors and get the notes to keep up. So... It's pretty hard. It's, it's very challenging. Uh, college is fun, but it's very demanding as well. And see, now in the light of, well, 1994, they instituted the clearinghouse. Right. And everybody, the clearinghouse is where you have to have a certain academic grade point in high school by the time you're a senior. Plus, you have to have a certain um, test score on right. one of your standardized ACT or ACT, SAT. Yes. And it's a sliding type scale. Yes, it is. And those people, you have to pass the clearinghouse now in order to be able to go to some of those colleges. Isn't that correct? Yes. Uh, the standard is, uh, they have raised the bar to 2.5, but it was a 2.0 and an 18 on your ACT. Right. I currently coach junior college as well. I'm at Oakland Community College. and. Most kids that don't get an 18, they can't go to a Division One or a Division Two. They have to go junior college. Which is all right, too, because tell us about the junior college. Have you seen it where after junior college they um, are able to go to a... Yes, they are. Uh, I've had uh, two kids currently uh, go to university trade and graduate. I had one kid uh, from Africa. He graduated from U of D just a, a month ago with a 3.9 in engineering. So he played two years with me 
uh, at Oakland, and then he went to University of Detroit. Did he play at University of Detroit? Yes, he did. What was the coach's there, name there, um, Roy? Ray McCallum. Ray McCallum. Yes, Ray McCallum. What, what happened to him? His son graduated, right? Yes, his and son, his son, is son in went the pros where? To Sacramento. Okay. He's at Sacramento. So the father left. No, the he, son left. The father's still there. Oh, he's still there. <laughs> yes, oh, I he didn't. Is. I didn't realize. That. Yes, he's still there. I think that that is so interesting. Coaching your, your own son. Your own son, and because you coach your daughter, don't you? I coached uh, my daughter with girls uh, basketball, and she graduated, went up to Michigan, and she just currently graduated. And I also coached my son. He's seventeen. Do you believe that? Your daughter has graduated from Michigan. You see yeah. how time flies. <laughs> that time really that flies. That time flies. It sure does. Chase, um, do you consider yourself a coachable young man? Yes, I, I do. I, I think that coaches appreciate that, don't they? And yes. what I mean by coachable, where the coach tells you something, you do it. Yes. And you don't, because the years I've seen basketball players, especially young ones, you could tell the ones who were going to be successful Absolutely. because they are able to listen. Listening right. is one of the first components, isn't that correct? Absolutely. And But there have been some people who want to talk back to a coach and everything. That's the height of – have you ever had had any players I've, like I've that? had players like that, and, and we, we try to mentor them and tell them, you know, if you're talking back, you're, you're not really listening. And you're right. absolutely right. If you you're listening, to, you're not learning. That's right. So kids like Chase, Chase is great. He buys into what we're trying to do. He helps his teammates. He shows a lot of leadership. So I depend on him more than any other kid. And when something's going wrong, I'll go to him and say, hey, come on, you got to do this, you got to do that. And he never talks back. He say, okay, coach, and he'll take that to the other And players. that, too, creates some leadership. Yeah. Leadership by example, that's one of the best things because young people are kind of apprehensive about talking to their peers. peers you know? Right, right. Absolutely. But that example yes. is very, very important. Yes, that example is very important. And he, he does a fantastic job. And he even plays up sometime. We have, uh, he's in the seventh grade, but we have eighth grade and ninth grade teams. So he plays up on those teams as well, and he, he does pretty good with them. So. I think that that's excellent because when you play up, that ups your game. Yes, it Better does. competition. Yes, yeah. and you're ready. Yeah. And I, tell me, Chase, before a game, are you ever kind of nervous? No. no. Well, that's great. <laughs> that is great. Tremendous. Yeah. Because sometimes you could use that. You can put the energy for that nervousness oh, into what you yeah, what you're trying to do. If I'm, right. Nervous, right. Right. if I'm nervous, I might mess up because I'm <laughs> thinking about it too much, and so no, I just don't even. No, think it's about just it. a little thing. You, like when I have to give a speech, I I'm always nervous before my speeches, speeches. I, and I've spoken all over the country. <laughs> but then I get out there, and all of a sudden, it just it just, it just flows, flows right. because I take that energy and I put it into my. Um, Performance, right. like I said, I had Ira Newble. Do you know Ira? I know Ira very well. Oh well, tell yeah. him. Yeah. You know me. Yeah. Okay. I was, uh, in fact, when they did a, an article of him when he was with Cleveland, mm -hmm. they did an article on him in the Akron Beacon Journal, mm -hmm. and he said Miss Perryman was my coach Carter. Right. <laughs> because I had him in acting. As a matter of fact, he was in my drama, drama pro program. program. Okay. And um, yes. And he, he loved that and Ira's stuff. Ira's a great kid. I always ended up trying to keep him out of trouble. Trouble, And right. see, that's one of the major things, too. And this is mm -hmm. like a cautionary tale because basketball players, and Ryan used to say this. He said, I don't like any girl who likes me for my basketball. That's so true. Because you're getting in a certain age and you're a handsome young man. Mm -hmm. And these girls, I mean, I don't know what happened with girls these days. but Yeah, they're a little different. <laughs> I, I tell my kids that basketball is your girlfriend. You, it, you keep that your number one uh, thing and you, you'll be fine. You know? Because uh, the right kind of girl won't distract you. That's right. She'll don't be you for agree? you. Yes, I don't do agree. Don't you agree? Very because much sometimes so. they just want all the time. Oh, you got to go to practice, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. And all We're this. We're not spending time together. You know, all you do is play basketball, and it's a distraction. So you got to have that basketball first. So quickly, Chase, what are you learning 
through this experience with, well, you're an excellent student. What is your grade point? Do you know, or what kind of grades do you make? Uh, A's and B's. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And, but what has basketball taught you? How to be a leader and work with the team, because you can't do anything alone. You always have to, most of the time you're going to be with somebody and you're going to have to learn how to communicate with people and work with people so you can get something accomplished. Absolutely, and you could get the win. And then mm -hmm. you have to be a good sportsman. Absolutely. If you don't win. That's right. You got to, sportsmanship is key in life. You got to learn how to lose and win. I know. Yeah. I hate losing. I know you hate losing. I know you hate losing, yeah. but sometimes, you know, when you're with two teams, somebody has that's to lose. lose. Right, it's right, It's like, dang, right. why can't we both win? Well, that's not competition. Right. You and, know? And, and losing teaches you how to win. I, right. I, I think everybody who's a good winner has lost before. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, and it teaches yeah. you how to win. Right. You just don't be born It takes you up another level, notch because, right. I mean, look at the NBA yep. finals, what's yep. happening. What we're going to do, we're going to go to a quick sliding break and bring on Autumn. We're back with Autumn. This is Antoine's daughter, and if you could see, see her good, <laughs> they look like uh, he spit her out. <laughs> the apple's not falling far from the tree and all of that good stuff. <laughs> So, Autumn, how are you today? Good, how are you? Oh, I'm great. Now, mm -hmm. what grade are you in? I'm in the sixth grade. Oh, you're just a sixth grader. Mm -hmm. She's kind of tall. She sure is. She's wow. tall, yeah, 5'7". 5'6". 6'? I was 5'7 in the sixth grade. grade uh -huh. well, right. I hated that. I was the <laughs> tallest girl in the class. I ended up, I mean, I was taller than all the boys. <laughs> Yeah. I said, this is not even fair. <laughs> not even fair. Now, you play basketball also, don't you? Yes, I do. What position? Center. Center. Wow. Um, I like girls' basketball now. I didn't like it when I was a kid because when I was a kid, you had to go, you could bounce the ball three times and you had to throw it. Throw it away. Then yeah. they had one person who could rove a roving guard or something like that. It wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. But do you like it? Yes, I do. So you play with the team now, right? Yes. Tell us about it. You give me these one-word answers. Uh -huh. Tell me about your team. Uh, we have a really good team. We won a championship like two or three weeks ago. What is your team's name? Lady Judges Court. Ladies Judges Court. And ladies and gentlemen, by the way, Judges Court, isn't that the name of your organization? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Why did you name it that? Uh, when I first started, I, I, I wanted to do something catchy, and uh, a lady named Paulette Holloway. Uh, who, I know Paulette. She went to Highland Park. That's right. She's she born well. and raised in Highland Park, and uh, Paulette is a very good friend of mine, and yeah. Paulette uh, and I, we came up with Judges Court. Actually, she did. So we uh, did the designs. We sat down and figured it out, and she helped me start Judges She's Court. She's so wonderful. She is. She's, I love her to death. She is so yes, wonderful. Yes. Hi, Paulette. I yep. give Hi, her Paulette. Yeah, I we're gonna, give... we're actually gonna have a banquet uh, at the end of this season. We're gonna honor her. Oh wow! I need to find it. out about that. Yes, I will definitely. Let I you need know to about find that. out about that yes. really because I love Paulette. Yes, I do and too. Her younger sister Annette was one of my students. Paulette mm -hmm. might have been one of my students. I know she was great. <laughs> right. And everything. Now you coach girls also. That's what I wanted to. Tell yes, you. I uh, I coach girls. Uh, I started out with my oldest daughter, and uh, I stopped coaching girls when she graduated from high school because she was too small. So. She's at the age now, and a lot of parents are like, "Why you don't do girls anymore?" So now I'm doing girls again. Now, are you going uh, coaching her? Yes, I am. Oh, yes. <laughs> How is it, Autumn, to have your dad coaching you? Uh, it's kind of hard because he like wants me to be the best player on the team, so he always makes me work harder than everyone else. Well, you know, they say that Michael Jordan worked harder in practice than he did on the court, so. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Yes, yes. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to coach your kids, you know. I, I learned that from my first daughter. And then I, I coached my son as well, and I've coached her. So, 
you know, they're always like, Dad, no, no, Dad. But, you know, you just want them to be the best, and you want them to be leaders out there. And then you see potential in them. Exactly. And that's exactly. part of a coach or a teacher's thing to bring out the what best. you see that they have yes. that they don't realize. And that's the thing about teaching, too. Right. You you see things in young people. I said, they don't even realize. They, they don't realize do it. That's right. But that's where a good coach or a good instructor mm -hmm. comes from. Yeah. I mean, they come and they say, why don't you try this? Yeah. But it seems like a parent would be so subjective to, right. and not objective because <laughs> it is your child. Right. And then he, you have to go, You she go home with you? She has to come home oh, with me. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, we drop all the other kids off, and she has to take that ride home <laughs> with me. And she's out the window, and I'm I'm, I'm giving her a speech. So. Well, it's so funny. I remember after my son's first game or so, because I told you I set him out the first season. Right. I set him out, and um, <laughs> but Ryan he ended out, huh? he, right. He ended up being <laughs> all state two years in a row. And he got oh, better, yes. but that tenth grade year, I said uh, after a game, I said, Ryan, where's that? ball handling you usually do he says mom how you gonna ask me about that it's like anybody else could have asked him that question except it, the you, parent right. that's why i asked you yeah does he ever say anything to you that that you say golly why are he asking me that why are you telling me that he wouldn't say that to anyone else do you ever feel that tell the truth she talked to you oh uh, yeah they could speak up huh? yeah yeah i do but what do you feel when I tell you you have to get more rebounds and play better defense and shoot the ball? I just feel like you're trying to make me be a better player. You don't feel bad about it, do you? Not really. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. That's good. But you're used to coaching your kids. Yes, I am. And, and, and I've learned uh, how to be patient. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, when I first started, I had to learn, and I'm still learning as a coach. Uh, Perry used to tell me that all the time, like, man, you got to learn patience, you know, because he comes up to my practices and help me sometimes. So I've learned over the years how to be patient and do one thing at a time to kids catch it. Right, yeah. right, because teaching is interesting, and you you could tell when they they get it. Get it, you, right. You're like, oh, they got it. <laughs> right, you're like, oh, thank God, they finally well, got that well, part. Well, tell me, how do people get to be a part of your program? Tell, tell the audience about your program. Yes, our program uh, starts from actually age 10 up to uh, 17. And you can contact us or go online at uh, www.judgescourtclubbasketball.org. It's Judges Court, Court Club, Club Basketball. That's www.judgescourt. Basketball club, basketball club. I said I spelled. Oh, I didn't spell, spell club. the club. Yes. Oh, yes. I got to start all over. <laughs> www. J U D G E S club C L U B basketball. Dot O R G org. Yep. Is there a phone number? Yes, there is. A uh, phone number is two four eight nine nine one five one. Four or five. And so what are you all doing this summer? What's in line for summer and everything? Well, we start from November to the end of July, and uh, we play basketball uh, nine months of the season. That is fabulous. Yeah. So what do you do those other three months, Coach? The other three months I do training. I uh, mostly train kids that's in my organization, but I do train other kids as well. And we just try to get better and have the kids grow each year. And we also have, uh, like I said, we're partnered up with Solid Foundations, which is a great tutoring service. Wow. And That's uh, great because scholarship is important. Yes, yeah, scholarship is so yeah. important. Yeah, That's what I, we're trying to do is get kids scholarships to college. And that always should be one of the main focuses of parents is their academics. That's right. That is, I mean, you may be a, I'd always say somebody has a champagne body and a 10 cent mind. That's right. You just can't, you can't be good in one thing if you want to reach that level. Right. You know, and the goal mainly is for a free education. That's right. We're trying to get kids uh, free educations and, 
you know, with a little investment from parents and parents helping participation, we can achieve that goal. You can do it. Antoine Jobert, this has been a thrill for me. And Autumn, you're a thrill for me too. You're a beautiful young lady and you're going to grow up to be so fabulous. And I'm glad you're a great rebounder because that's where it comes from. <laughs> Thank right. you. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in just a minute with Mr. Marvin Willis, Mr. James Mitchell. They're co-writers of Float On. We're celebrating Black Music Month, so stay right here. Be right back. Thank you. Thanks.